welcome back to my channel. My name is Shelby and today is the start of another reading vlog. I had so much fun doing my last reading vlog so I wanted to do another one and this time focusing on Kindle Unlimited. I wanted to focus on new releases, also new to me authors. So there's a total of five romances that are Kindle Unlimited 2021 releases and new to me authors. Before I hop into the reading portion of this I wanted to go over all of the five books and kind of what each one is about and why I wanted to pick them up. As always I will link all of these books down below so you can go check them out for yourselves. The first one I have is The Best Friend Sister by Sophie Blue. I've seen arcs of this one pop up on Instagram and that's how it became on my radar. I think actually all of these ones I've seen on Instagram and that's how I first discovered them. And this is about a girl who discovers that her boyfriend is cheating on her because she sees him on an Instagram live or a Facebook live propose to his girlfriend and that's how she discovers he's with someone else. So she decides to lay low and she stays with her brother's best friend. He is fixing up his grandparents in and he offers the heroine a place to stay to kind of lay low. But when I read the premise, I get the vibe that her past will catch up to her there. I love the brother's best friend trope and I know a lot of you guys do too. So I'm really excited to see if I like this one. Then I have The Blind Date by Lauren Landish. And this is an author I've been meaning to try for a really long time and she's very popular. Lauren Landish writes a ton of different types of romances. She kind of has something for everyone. And this is her latest release and the premise of this is really cute. Just so happens to also be brother's best friend. I think it's supposed to be a rom-com. It's about a girl who decides to try this dating app but the dating app you don't get to see photos of the person you match with and so she matches with someone and she goes on this blind date and it just so happens that her brother's best friend is her match. I'm not sure if they hate each other or if it's just a forbidden thing, but it sounds really cute and I have a lot of friends who really like Lauren Landish. And then I have one that I haven't really heard a lot about. I have a couple friends who have read this book and that is Leave Him Loved by Harlow Ray. And this is a small town romance. The cover isn't my favorite. I don't really like the cover model. There's something about his hair I don't really like, but the premise sounded really cute to me. It's about a big city girl who moves to a small town and the hero is the town's most eligible eligible bachelor and it is their romance. It sounds really cute so I'm excited to pick this one up too. The next one is kind of different from the other three and that is From the Embers by Ali Martinez. This one has been getting a lot of hype and I had a friend who read it and she really wanted to talk to me about it because she had a lot of thoughts on it and I hadn't read it yet so I'm dying to pick it up and the premise of this is a little bit complicated but it's about this guy who is a dad he is married and I believe there's a fire and he thinks he's saving his wife but it turns out he saves another woman's life and his wife I think dies the only two survivors of that fire are the hero and heroine and he saved her and I think she ends up offering him a place to stay with his child until he gets back on his feet and things like that and it is their romance I think there is maybe some mystery to it but I'm not 100% sure. It sounds really good and I've seen a lot of really good reviews for it. The last one that I have is Hooking Up with Mr. Wrong by Eloise Liston. This one is more new adult so it's kind of different from all the other ones I mentioned. I'm glad I have a little bit of variety to keep me interested. The hero and heroine in this story are dorm neighbors in college and they really don't like each other so it's enemies to lovers. I'm not sure how it happens but they end up spending one night together and she becomes pregnant from that night. So it is surprise pregnancy, enemies to lovers, new adult, neighbors to lovers. I think quite a few tropes are in here and you guys know surprise pregnancy isn't my favorite but it has grown on me and if it's done well I do like it. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this one so I'm very curious to see if I enjoy it. It's going to be a few days before I actually read these books because I have a couple of new releases I am dying to read. I really want to read Grumpy Cowboy by Max Monroe and I really want to read the new Melanie Harlow. I think it's called Tie Me Down. It's the final book in the Bellamy Creek series so I'm really excited for those two. I want to read those before I get to these books. So I'll be back in a couple days. Okay, it's a couple days later and I picked up From the Embers by Ali Martinez and I am almost at the halfway mark. It's a pretty short book. It is under 300 pages and as it turns out, I was kind of wrong about the premise. So I understand now why I was so confused. It is about a guy named Ethan who is married. He has a little baby and his wife's best friend and his best friend are married and the wife's name is Brie and Brie and her husband have two children and one night the two sets of parents they get together for like a dinner night and they leave the three children with a babysitter at Bree's house and a fire happens an explosion happens from a burst pipe in the basement Easton thinks he is saving his wife but he accidentally saves Bree instead because they both have brown hair and Easton's wife and Bree's husband both die in the fire so not only did they lose their spouse but they lost their best friends as well Easton and Bree don't get along very well and now that Easton's house is burned 
burnt and his wife has passed away. Bree offers her pool house to Ethan to live in with his little daughter. So he moves in, helps her with the children while she gets their business in order because her and her husband owned this big company and she is now forced to take on that responsibility. So that's kind of where the story starts. And now we are a year later. We have just passed the anniversary of the fire and Ethan and Bree have come into this kind of companionship, a friendship, and a lot of drama is going on. There were secrets and lies in both of the marriages and in their lives. And it is a very compelling read. I am very hooked at this point. And some of the things I could have seen coming and some of the things not so much. So I'm really enjoying it and I want to see the answers to what is going on. So when I end up finishing it, I will come back and update you later. Okay, it is the next day and yesterday I finished From the Embers by Ali Martinez. And this was a really quick read. Like I had said, it was around 250 pages and I couldn't put this one down. It was very unput downable, very compulsive. I wanted to know what was going to happen. Around the 50% mark, there was quite a bit of drama and intrigue and a lot of it I wasn't expecting so I really liked that. My favorite part of this book was the relationship between Brie and Ethan and seeing them come together after tragedy and heartbreak and creating their little family. I didn't really love a plot point that was at the end of the book. It was after like the 80% mark and I just didn't really enjoy it. I didn't think it fit and I don't think it was needed. There was just so many different conflict points in this book and it would have been totally fine without that particular thing. I'm being pretty vague because it would give it away. Other than that, I love the book and I would definitely read more by Ali Martinez in the future. So I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. And then after I finished that, I picked up The Blind Date by Lauren Landish because I wanted something that was completely different than From the Embers. And this is a romantic comedy, brother's best friend, and it is about Riley who she has like a really famous Instagram and she's known for being like Riley Sunshine. So very positive and motivational. And the hero's name is Noah and he helped create this app with his best friend and his best friend happens to be Riley's brother. So the app that they created was Blind Date. Basically you get matched with people on this app after you take this test and you get like a percentage match rating and you talk to people without knowing what they look like. And so they both ended up joining the site and using fake names because they didn't want to give themselves away and they get paired and they have a really good connection and when they go on their first date they realize who their identities are and that they already know each other and as it turned out years ago they got off on the wrong foot but I wouldn't say this is enemies to lovers because they get over that pretty quickly and it's forbidden because it's brother's best friend but also Riley's best friend is Noah's sister so it's like double forbidden. I know some people ask me for recommendations for like best friend's brother and I don't have a lot of those recommendations but this one does have that trope and I really like this. It is a romantic comedy, very lighthearted and cute but it's 400 pages so it's rather long for a rom-com and I think a lot of these scenes could have been condensed like certain things that aren't very pivotal to the plot or anything are pretty drawn out and while they're cute scenes and I really liked them I don't think this story needs to be more than like 300 pages if you ask me but I am enjoying it it's really cute and I'm excited to finish it so when I end up finishing it and starting my next read I will come and update you later okay last night I finished The Blind Date by Lauren Landish and this was a really cute romance. If you like something light and fun, I think you'd really enjoy this one. I wanted really badly to give it four stars because it was enjoyable, but it was just lacking a little bit for me. I felt like Noah and Riley were kind of caricatures and sometimes they weren't very relatable. And so I didn't really connect to their romance as much as I wanted to, even though there was so much about it I did enjoy. Like I had said yesterday, I also felt like it dragged on. And some of the non-pivotal scenes to the plot they dragged on really long for like 10 to 15 pages and I just don't see that as very necessary. So I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. I did enjoy it and I'll definitely read more by Lauren Landish in the future because I really liked her writing style. Luckily she writes a little bit of everything, something for everyone and so I feel like I could try her again and get a totally different vibe. So I am glad that I read this. I did like the dating app element and the texting romance.
months and I still would recommend it. And then last night before bed, I picked up Leave Him Loved by Harlow Ray and I'm already halfway through this book. I think it's about 350 pages. Our heroine's name is Audria and our hero's name is Reeve. Very interesting names, but the heroine is fresh out of college and she's trying to get a teaching job and she's having a really hard time finding a job. So she ends up getting a job at an elementary school in a really small town in Iowa and that's how she ends up meeting the hero. She goes to the small town and she goes grocery shopping for the first time and she literally runs into Reeve. They're clearly attracted to each other but they decide to stay friends instead of explore a romance but the more time they spend together they decide to start something up even though she's only planning on staying in that small town for about a year. So they decide to have kind of a no strings attached relationship as long as they don't develop real feelings and so far this isn't really working for me. The friendship between Reeve and Audria kind of came out of nowhere and it didn't seem very realistic to me. They were like thick as thieves after only hanging out like once and it didn't seem very realistic. And there's a lot of time jumps that like go on a sweet date or something and then it'll all of a sudden be like oh I haven't seen you in like 10 days or I've been here already for like six months and I don't feel like I've gotten to know the main characters enough for that much time to have passed. So I'm having a hard time emotionally connecting to the story as well as the characters. Neither are really working that well for me and usually I can connect to one or the other. So I'm hoping that it gets better for me by the end. So when I end up finishing it, I will come back and update you later. Okay, so yesterday I ended up finishing Leave Him Loved by Harlow Ray and I don't exactly remember everything that I said in the last clip so I don't really want to repeat myself but this one ended up being a three star read for me. I think I had said last time that some things in the story weren't really working for me and that kind of carried on throughout. I did think a lot of the dates between Reeve and Audria were pretty cute, especially for like small town charm, but it just was not enough for me to love this one. There was a lot of time jumps, so we follow them through like the whole school year, but I didn't see them together enough to believe that the relationship was that strong and that it had actually been a whole year. So so this is a cute small town romance but definitely not a new favorite or anything like that. Then I ended up picking up Hooking Up with Mr. Wrong by Eloise Liston and I am over halfway through this one now. I'm at like 60% and I forgot to mention when I first brought this book up that this is a debut novel and while reading it it doesn't read like an author's first book at all. I do really like the author's writing style and our two main characters are Ava and Connor who are college dorm mates. They share a wall and them being college dorm mates only last the very first couple of of chapters of the story. For their first year of college they are dorm mates and then a year later they think that they'll never see each other again but as it turns out Ava's best friend has a twin and his roommate ends up being Connor so he ends up being in her life pretty frequently. She attends a house party at their house. She gets really drunk. She admits to Connor she thinks he is hot and she loses her virginity to him and then she discovers she's pregnant a couple months later and obviously it's his baby. So they are kind of forced to figure out this parenting thing together and at the 60% mark she's still pregnant and all that and she ended up moving into his house because she had some things going on where everyone was kind of worried about her. So he he wants to be there and take care of her. So a little bit of forced proximity and this is a cute new adult romance. It is definitely really new adult. There's a lot of young drama. There's some other girl drama that I don't really like. You can definitely tell the main characters are like 20 years old. They sure act like it. So that can kind of get on my nerves a little bit, but I try to tell myself that they're pretty young. It's only their sophomore year of college. Some new adult I really like and some new adult I'm not huge on. And this one I'm kind of in the middle. Like I said, I really like the author's writing and it doesn't feel like her first book. It feels like she's written books before, but some of the petty drama is getting on my last nerve. So I'm hoping that it resolves in a way that I like. Okay, it's the next day and yesterday I finished Hooking Up with Mr. Wrong by Eloise Liston. And this was a pretty good new adult romance and I really liked the author's writing style and it didn't feel like a debut novel at all. You guys know that surprise pregnancies are kind of a hit or miss trope for me and I actually really liked it in this story. It seemed really realistic and I liked that it was included in the synopsis so I knew what I was getting into but I had mentioned that it has a lot of drama in here that is very indicative of the characters ages and there is some other girl drama and that is a very specific thing in romance that I actually don't really like and it was basically a study partner slash 
slash friend of the hero. She was trying to put a rift in the relationship with the hero and heroine and trying to insert herself and the author made the hero seem kind of oblivious and I just don't think he would be that oblivious to it. Overall it read kind of young and so I couldn't really connect a lot with it but I still ended up rating it three stars and I would read more by this author in the future. Then I ended up picking up and finishing The Best Friend's Sister by Sophie Blue. The page count wasn't listed on Goodreads so I had no idea it's actually a novella. It was only about 150 pages so I read it in one sitting and this was a cute romance. It is about our two main characters who are actually from the UK and our heroine she discovers her boyfriend is cheating on her when she sees on social media that he has proposed to another woman so she decides to get out of town. Her brother's best friend offers for her to come help him at the B&B &B that he is fixing up in North Carolina. He inherited it from his grandparents. The heroine is really into interior decorating and design and things like that so she comes over and they fix up this B&B together and they fall in love. And this was cute but I think it was too much to try and fit into around 150 pages. I didn't really feel a lot of connection to either main character. It made sense that the two main characters would talk like British people because they were from that area but the author also made Americans talk like British people and it just didn't seem very realistic and a lot of the phrases and things used just weren't things that we use here in the US. So I feel like the author should have done a little more research on that before writing it. And this one also had the other girl drama and it was done even worse. It was kind of just thrown in last minute. It caused some drama at the end and like I said it was a novella so there was kind of no room for this. So I'm going to give it I think two and a half or three stars. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever read but it wasn't as good as some of the other books I read this week. So I'm quickly going to go over all the books that I read. The first one was After the Embers by Ali Martinez. I gave this four and a half stars. Then I read The Blind Date by Lauren Landish. I gave this three and a half stars. Then I read Leave Him Loved by Harlow Ray, which I gave three stars. Then Hooking Up with Mr. Wrong by Eloise Liston, which I gave three stars. Then lastly, The Best Friend Sister by Sophie Blue, which I gave two and a half stars. I'd love to hear if you've read any of these books and if you liked them. As always, I will link them all down below and I will see you guys on my next one. Bye. <laughs>